You may have wondered if there's a method for finding the volume of different shapes, and there is. What you need to do to find the volume of different shapes, and it kind of works for any shape really, any simple shape, is you need to find the cross section of that shape and multiply it by its length. Why am I talking about cross section and, and length? Well, let's take a cuboid, like so. And I'll draw it out just so you can see how it's made. A cross section is a section of the shape that goes all the way across and through the shape. In other words, kind of like a slice of that shape. If in this cuboid they gave us the depth of 3 centimeters, a height of 4 centimeters, and perhaps a length of 6 centimeters, what is the area of the cross section and therefore the volume? First of all, what is the cross section? Can you see a slice which goes all the way through the shape? Actually, with a cuboid, there's two different slices you could take. You could either take this slice, oops, let's not do it in red, let's do it in blue. You could either take this slice here, because you can see it goes all the way from the right to the left, all the way through the shape. So therefore, it's a cross section. Let's label that as a cross section. And actually, there is another cross section you could have taken, which would be here, so the front bit which goes all the way through from the front to the back of the shape. So that would also be a cross section. And again, uh, if I write cross section. So both of those could be cross sections, but what we're going to do is we're just going to take the right to left cross section. So you're waiting for me to say, how do you get the volume? Well, it's the cross section times by the length of the shape. Let's highlight that, just so we remember and let's fill it in just because it's pretty for no other reason and let's use that for this shape the area of that cross section would be 3 times 4 3 times 4 is 12 so that's 12 centimeters squared because it's an area then we times 12 centimeters squared by the length, which is 6 centimeters. Now you can see we're not only going to get a number, we're going to get a unit. 12 times 6 is 72. 12 times 6 is 72. But a centimeter squared and a centimeter, you actually get centimeters cubed. The lesson here is that any volume is going to be the unit cubed, so centimeters cubed or meters cubed, etc. Don't forget, an area is squared, a length is just centimeter or meter, whatever, and a volume is going to be cubed. Okay, that's the volume of a cuboid, but what about different shapes? Let's take a triangular prism. A triangular prism, which looks something like that and that again and joined up my question to you is what's the cross section of a triangular prism the cross section just to remind you is the slice that runs all the way through the shape this time there's only one possible cross section and that's the triangle on the side if you can see that runs all the way from the front to the back of the shape so it's the cross section. Again, they'd give you the lengths. So that could be six centimeters. That would be eight centimeters, perhaps. And the length would be 10 centimeters, just for, as an example. What do we do again for the volume? Well, cross section times by length. Area of the cross section times by the length of the shape. This triangle, let's get its area. You do eight times by six which is 48. So is that the area of that triangle? No, because remember it's a triangle so we have to divide by 2. 48 divided by 2 is 24 centimeters squared. 
the area of that cross section is therefore 24 centimeters squared. What do we do now? Once we get the area of the cross section, we times that by its, the length of the shape. In this case, it's 24 times by 10. That will give us 240, and can you think of the units? It would be centimeters cubed. Right, last example, and this is the most beautiful of all, I think. A cylinder. If we had a cylinder here of, let's draw the other side down here, of radius 5, perhaps. Radius of 5 down here. Let's just fill it in. It's a teeny bit inaccurate, my drawing, but you get the idea. It's supposed to be a cylinder. And the radius would be across here. How would First of all, can you spot the cross-section? What's the cross-section of this shape? What's the slice that runs all the way through the shape? The cross-section here would be the circle on top, because that runs all the way from the top to the bottom of the shape. All we need to do, therefore, is find the area of that cross-section, the area of that circle, and times it by the length of the cylinder, which I forgot to put, but let's just say is 15 centimetres. 15 centimetres. I'll just draw it on. Okie doke. What's the area of a circle again? As in a, a previous video, I showed that the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius. In this case, that's pi times 5 squared. 5 squared is 25, so it's 25 times by pi, which in our calculators gives us 78.54. 78.54, let's just say 78.54. Oh, that's the area. Now, because it's an area, it's centimetres squared. Let's not make it overlap too much. If we bring it over here. Mm, over there, just so you can see it. That is actually the area of this circle on top. What do we do to get the volume? The cross-section times by the length. So that amount times by the height of the circle, in this case, which is 15 and we get a grand total as the volume of 1,178.1 1, centimeters cubed. And that is the method for finding the volume of 3D shapes.